welcome back to the Vegan Experimentalist channel. Here we are for another taste test. First up is some jerky. The flavor is prickly pear teriyaki. I really, really love prickly, prickly pear. Prickly teriyaki, okay. Teriyaki I find sometimes too, too sweet. sweet yeah. um, so this is made in Texas. I picked it up at HEB when I was in Texas a bit ago. It is labeled vegan, um, and the base of it is soybean. So, here we go. Sorry. Oh. Oof. Does smell like soy sauce to me. <clears throat> These are huge. Wow. Let's. It, big, big boys. <laughs> it looks like a butler soy curl. Um, do you know that brand? I do not, but everything's bigger in Oh, Texas. it's very dry. I would have thought it'd be a little juicy. I know that jerky, jerky is dry, come but... Come on, now. <clears throat> Cheers. Hmm, okay. The flavor's good. The dryness of the inside, I know that jerky is supposed to be dry, but I feel like I've had better texture than this. It's maybe too thick ratio of... Yeah, but it also like kind of like melts in your mouth in a way that like, mm -hmm. you know, like non prickly pear curry uh, jerky doesn't. Um, it's a little strange, but tough to get used to because you, you know, you're chewing on that jerky you're chewing on that jerky that's how it's supposed to go and this is just like duh, 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 duh. yeah there you go i think that's what vegan jerkies are a little bit more maybe <clears throat> yeah I've, I've had jerkies that weren't quite as melty as this I yeah vegan jerkies that is good i think listen i don't detect the prickly pear um do you um i get a vague hint of some kind of fruits, but I wouldn't be able to distinguish it as prickly pear per se. Yeah, there is a little bit of a fruitiness. It is nice. I like that flavor. For me, the flavor is four out of five. The overall experience, three out of five being generous. Yeah, the, the teriyaki mm -hmm. is it's on the sweet side for me. I'd almost rather it be soy sauce in some sense because then you get like the kind of like saltiness that I associate with jerky. I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's already the, salty. Anyway, this, don't, don't, don't read those three. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the nutrition facts. The second ingredient is tamari. Okay. Um, then apple cider vinegar, olive oil, prickly pear syrup, garlic powder, and ginger powder. Um, I also like my, my jerky to be kind of like very heavily spiced. And, and this one, I would say, is not heavily spiced at all. And that plus the kind of melt in your mouth effect. It's not really my thing. I'm going to give it a two out of five. Okay. I wouldn't buy it again, but I'm going to finish the bag for sure. <laughs> Next up is a chocolate. Um, I got it. I've never seen this brand before. Yummy Comb. And they had vegan and non-vegan um, Belgian chocolates mm -hmm. um, filled with honeycomb. And I picked this up from Goddess and the Grocer in Chicago. So it says... So what's, what's the honeycomb material here then? I feel like honeycomb... Yeah, it has bicarbonate of soda. They like put sugar in that and it kind of just fizzes and makes okay. a texture. Um, so is this actually from Belgium? No, it's handcrafted in the UK. Um, but it is 70% dark chocolate, um, vanilla, and the bicarb pretty much. So... Alright, let's go for it. Yeah, it smells like chocolate to me. But it smells like dark orange. When, yeah, a little bit. When chocolate is flavored orange, it has a very specific scent. It reminds me of those um, non-vegan oranges you'd crack around Christmas time. All right, let's dig in. All right, I'm taking a small piece for myself. Ooh. Wow. Mine broke apart. I wanted to show the interior, which kind of looks like a Butterfinger, but instead of flaky, it's just um, totally airy. Hmm. But 
Thoughts? I mean, Butterfinger is interesting because it does kind of have that like crunch to it and the, the, the hardened sugar kind of sticks to your teeth a little bit. Not quite as bad as Butterfinger, mm -hmm. but a little bit in, in that same way. So it's kind of like an orange, less dense Butterfinger almost. But the Butterfinger quality from what I recall many years ago was like not good quality. This is clearly good quality oh, yeah, chocolate. No, it's, it's higher quality than Butterfinger. High quality. Yeah, I'm just saying that the taste and texture are at least reminiscent of it. Yeah, for me, five out of five it was so, so good. I mean, tough to give for me to give five out of five on, on anything, but it, this comes pretty close. Some are four and a half. Do you have anything to detract that specific or <laughs> just because you don't want to give a five? Um, I think I, if I had anything to detract, it's again, maybe I'm just not a sweet guy, but I can't see myself getting like more than two or three of these yeah. in a sitting because it is, it is sweet. And if you have more than two or three, it will wear on you. I think though this was expensive, um, but also the store I got it from is generally marked up. So you'd hope you don't go through a whole bag because it's, um, you know, expensive. Mm. So now we have Sweet Lauren's uh, cookie dough that you can eat raw or I baked two of the dozen that come in the package. Mm. So Sweet Lauren's is always a vegan brand. I've had several of their flavors. Um, this is their pumpkin spice. Um, so the ingredients do include real pumpkin. Um, so here's the moment it came towards my face, there was that whiff of classic pumpkin. Very classic. Classic pumpkin. That is so nice. It does have the grit of a gluten-free, but it does taste, um, I baked it in the air fryer eight minutes on 330. Um, they're definitely on the chewier side, which I like kind of a little bit raw in the center. So I had to let them cool for a long time for them to even be somewhat solid to pick up. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I like my cookies a little harder, but that's, that's not really a, anything to do with the dough itself um but at the same time look how brown the top got i fear that's true. I, like, I like the i like that um, but i fear if i let left it in longer it would have got too brown on the top it's possible but as for as for the the dough itself um it's it's pretty good yeah um classic pumpkin um kind of exactly what i expected it to be and it delivered so four and a half out of five for me, I and I always think of creative ways to use things, but would probably never do it. I imagine this um, crumbled on like a vanilla vegan ice cream to be very good because you must love pumpkin spice for this one. This isn't just um, a little bit of it. I think it's... For some reason I can imagine this going well with like a whipped cream as well. Like yeah. Just dip it in a whipped cream and go... Yeah. Yeah, like it's decadent treats. Yeah, because honestly, it's almost like the pie crust combined with a pie filling. It's almost giving yeah, that a little that's bit. That's probably why I'm thinking of that. Yeah, like pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah, I would say for me also four and a half out of five. Up next is Poshi brand, um, sort of a Mediterranean three bean vinaigrette salad. This was purchased from Whole Foods in the non-refrigerated section, but I put it in the refrigerator because I think we would enjoy it cold, like that. Yeah. The ingredients are red kidney beans, green beans, chickpeas, copia pepper, salt, cane vinegar, citric acid, um, uh, chloride, and lactic acid. This was labeled vegan on the top. I cut it off and it is a product of Peru. So Let's try it. The chop is smaller than I thought it would be given the size on the front. Mm. Wow. The chickpea is nice and al dente. Mm. It's not panned green beans, but it's definitely not a fresh green bean. Mm -hmm. So given that it 
lost its snap. It's nice that the chickpea has more of a crunch. I think the flavor profile is really simple, tangy, um, good. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, I also wish that the green beans were a little harder. They did kind of mush up the bits, and you know, especially in contrast to the uh, kidney beans and the chickpeas. Um, I don't. Yeah, the flavors were were on point. I mean, you know, I think I I could handle maybe some a little more spice, maybe, but I think it was fine. I think for me, it's not intended to be spicy. It's just intended to be almost like a pickled side for what whatever you're eating, like. Mm -hmm. um, Hot dog, kind of, hamburgers, kind of like an antipasta. Or yeah, something. yeah. I would not buy this again because of the price point. Um, this is something you could make at home very easily, and sure. it would probably be better. But if you're looking for something quick, I could see this over rice or with quinoa, just like a quick meal. Yeah, so it's a good supplement to to a composed meal. Yeah. It doesn't feel overly processed. You know, it's a processed food, but it feels mm. still fresh. It has some. Yeah, Precious. it's not like over like salted or anything like that. Yeah, I would say for me, it's between a three and a half and a four. Um, just because these are like my ideal ingredients together. <laughs> and I know I could make it better. So I would not reach for the, the pre-made. Yeah, well, it takes a little effort to make it though. Um, I, you know, I, I'd give it a four if you can make the... Uh, Green beans more al dente, but as it stands now, uh, three and a half. Up next, another savory item, a green goddess dip made by Gotham Greens, which is a local Illinois, I think, um, purveyor of mostly like lettuces. Yeah. I love their lettuces so, so much. Um, and they make pestos and a few other things. I've not had any of their sauces mm. or dips. Um, but this says green goddess dip packed with basil, avocado, parsley, almonds, and chickpeas. Okay. But I do want to remark the first ingredient is cauliflower. cauliflower. You know what's interesting? <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it, it says created and distributed by Gotham Greens in Brooklyn. Oh, that makes more sense, Gotham. Yeah, but except when I buy things in the store, it has the local label. Mm, maybe they have multiple um, maybe, farms. And maybe the or... lettuce is coming from local, mm. but they're maybe composed is not. I see. Anyway, okay, so the first ingredient is cauliflower. Hmm. Definitely smells like a cauliflower-based product. It does smell like a cauliflower, yes. Which, and, you, and I can tell it smells like garlicky. Mm -hmm. That, you know, a cauliflower rice does not smell super appealing to me, so. Which is a little apprehensive. <laughs> Let's dig in. Okay. Really hit with basil. Mmm. I feel like I've had a similar taste before. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe because everything cauliflower based, like a cauliflower rice, really tastes so similar to me. Okay. So it's the cauliflower taste and smell, and then the basil that's really coming through for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, what do you think? I, I think I got this. Um, it was on sale at Whole Foods. It wasn't something I would normally go for, but I wanted to film a taste test that we haven't in a while. Um, I'm not really sure how I'll use this. Mm -hmm. We're dipping it in a cracker, but I do feel like it needs to be somehow a little dollop on a salad. Um, sure. Yeah. And you think it could be like an like a artichoke dip kind of replacement for uh, chips or whatever? It could, although I don't, I wouldn't eat that. Um, just yeah, I mean, I, I, so yeah, my, my, my score is gonna be kind of low because I'm not like a big thick, dip guy in, in, in general um but i mean i guess this is you know fine as far as thick dips go it's like heavy on the basil i'm not like the biggest fan of basil so if you know if you don't like basil you're not gonna like this and by the way they <laughs> do have a pesto so i'm surprised at how basil this green goddess is hmm. 
Yeah, I, I'd give this like a two and a half. Yeah, for me, it's between a two and a half and a three. I can tell it's good quality. I can tell some people will really love it. But for my personal taste and use, thinking about use cases, it's limited for me. Um, so for that reason, I probably wouldn't pre repurchase. But I do think people could really enjoy it. So I think we had a good taste test. Um, it was definitely a smattering of things. Mm -hmm. Some Hodgepodge. sweet, some savory. Uh, it's beginning to be fall. The mornings are crisp. We only had one pumpkin spice um, versus either last year or two years ago. We uh -huh. really did a full pumpkin spice review. But I enjoyed a lot of what we had um, and it was fun. So thank you for watching and we'll see you again. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Bye.